as we begin 2007. You know, Texas is perched at the forefront of a new era of prosperity. The economy's growing, government revenues are on the rise, our state surplus is larger than ever, just four years removed from our largest shortfall ever. Frivolous lawsuits are down, insurance rates for our homeowners and doctors on the way down, and thanks to medical liability reforms, hospitals are once again able to recruit specialists whose expertise can mean the difference between life and death. School funding, teacher pay, classroom achievement are all on their way up. More Texans have a job than ever before. More own a home. A trend that is unlikely to change because you had the wisdom to cut school property taxes by 33% last year. You know, the high-tech engine is once again generating jobs, and innovation, and investment. Our state's building roads faster than any state in the nation. And a landmark telecommunications competition law has resulted in better choices for consumers while unleashing over a billion dollars in new investments. For many, times are very good. But left out of the jubilation are nearly four million Texans who live in prosperity shadow rather than in its light. For the next four years, my goal is to spread opportunity far and wide for those that are willing to take personal responsibility for their lives and for those that they bring into this world. I don't believe government can solve every social ill. Nor do I believe that we can tax and spend our way to prosperity. I do believe, however, that there are investments that we can make today that will lift people out of poverty, bolster the middle class, ensure the Texans of tomorrow are less dependent on government. This moment in time is unique. It's a unique opportunity to address great challenges and build the foundation for a future of unparalleled prosperity. You know, I don't know when the day will come that we find a cure for cancer. But I do know it is my dream to accelerate that day. It's arrival with a multi-billion dollar cancer research in initiative that can save lives and provide millions renewed hope. Recent progress gives us hope of ultimate victory against this disease. For the first time ever, we have a vaccine that can prevent a cancer, a cancer that prevents the spread of HPV, the leading cause of cervical cancer in women. And I understand the concern. I understand the concern some of my great and dear friends have about requiring this vaccine, which is why parents can opt out if they so choose. But I refuse to look a young woman in the eye who suffers from this form of cancer and tell her that we could have stopped it, but we didn't. Others may focus on the cause of this cancer, but I'm going to stay focused on the cure. And if I err, I'm going to err on the side of protecting life. I happen to believe that Texans deserve more than property tax relief. They deserve appraisal relief as well. It's not good enough to only make appraisals more accurate through sales price disclosure, but by itself this action will only lead to higher taxes. I think you also must restrain appraisal windfalls. You know, I believe local governments should be able to raise all the revenue that they need 
Just do it with a vote and not through the appraiser's note. <laughs> And if you want to spend more than 5% a year, there's no need to be shy about allowing the people to vote on it. You know, for years, they have supported worthy bond proposals, and they will do exactly the same for good investments in local priorities. I believe the state should live under a similar spending cap. You know, in a time of record revenues, there is a temptation to spend more than we can sustain in the years to come. That's why I'm proposing a stricter spending cap tied to the average inflation and population growth of the last six years. This session, such a spending limit would be 3.5% lower than the current spending limit and would amount to a state spending increase of less than 5% a year. Before us is a unique opportunity, a unique opportunity to address great challenges. We can either dissolve into partisan disputes that leave Texas no better off than we were 140 days before we got here, or we can join together in a spirit of bipartisan unity for causes greater than self and greater than political party. From providing access to insurance for millions of working Texans, to investing in great colleges and universities, to funding a cancer research initiative that can save countless lives, there is so much that we can do together. I ask that past disputes be left in the past in order to pursue our future promise that you choose the high road of unity rather than the easy course of cynicism. And that you join me in leaving the critics on the sidelines to fight the good fight on the front lines. Now there'll be critics of what we attempt. Some will fight for the status quo, even when change is needed for the greater good. Our task is not easy, but none of us were sent here to do what is easy. We were sent here to do what is right. and how historic this session can be if we fight for the right, if we empower the powerless and lift up the lowly, if we make this Texas a land of tremendous opportunities and attainable prosperity. The state of our state is good for many. Before us is the challenge to make it good for many more by spreading opportunity far and wide. Let's fight for the Texas we aspire to, the Texas that can be, the Texas that can lead the world. God bless you and thank you for being here.